Hi friends, good day. Today, let us try to understand about EBITDA, EBITDA margin, EBITDA multiple advantages and disadvantages of using EBITDA through this video. According to William Feather, one of the funny things about the stock market is that every time one person buys, another sells and both think they are astute. Please subscribe for more videos. Click the bell icon for updates. What is EBITDA? EBITDA stands for Earnings Before Interest, Taxes, Depreciation and Amortization. It is a metric used to evaluate a company's operating performance. The in-depth definition of the key terms in EBITDA are 1. Earnings The net profit or net income of an organization. Number 2. Before Excludes certain factors from the equation. Since these are already subtracted from the net profits, the EBITDA calculation adds them back in. This makes the EBITDA total higher than the net profit. Number 3. Interest. The expense to a business cost by interest rates such as loans provided by a bank or a similar third party. Number 4. Taxes. The expenses to a business caused by tax rates imposed by their city, state and country as a whole. Number 5. Depreciation. A non-cash expense referring to the gradual reduction in the value of the company's assets. Number 6. Amortization. A non-cash expense referring to the cost of intangible that is non-balance sheet assets over time. EBITDA metric excludes the non-operating expenses and certain non-cash expenses. The purpose of these deductions is to remove the factors that business owners have discretion over such as debt financing capital structure, methods of depreciation and taxes to some extent. It can be seen as a proxy for the cash flow from the entire company's operations. EBATDA acts as an alternative to other metrics like revenue, earnings or the net income and measures the company's financial performance. This metric is how the people determine business value as it places the focus on the financial performance or the outcome of the operating decisions. This is done by removing the impacts of the non-operating decisions made by the existing management such as interest expenses, tax rates or significant intangible assets. Finally, this leaves a figure which reflects the profitability of the business much better then this can be compared between companies by owners, buyers and investors. This is why many investors use EBITDA over other metrics when deciding which company or organization is more attractive when compared to the others. There is no legal requirement for companies to disclose their EBITDA. According to the US generally accepted accounting principles that is GAAP, it can be worked out and reported using the information found in the company's financial statement. The depreciation and the amortization figures are normally found in the notes to operating profit or on the cash flow statement while the earnings, tax and interest numbers are found on the income statement. The usual shortcut to calculate EBITDA is to start with operating profit, also called as earnings before interest and tax, which is EBIT, and then add back depreciation and amortization. EBITDA can also be used as a shortcut to estimate the cash flow available to pay the debt of long-term assets. Now let's look into EBITDA formula. EBITDA is equal to net income plus interest plus taxes plus D plus A, where D is equal to depreciation, A is equal to amortization. So EBITDA is equal to operating profit plus 
DE plus AE, whereas DE is equal to depreciation expense, AE is equal to amortization expenses. Now, what is a good EBITDA? To figure out whether the calculated EBITDA number is good or not, we need to calculate the EBITDA margin. EBITDA margin is equal to EBITDA divided by total revenue. By determining a percentage of EBITDA against the company's overall revenue, this margin indicates how much cash profit a business makes in a single year. If the company has a larger margin compared to another, it is most likely that the potential professional buyer will see more growth in the company. EBITDA Multiple To get the EBITDA multiple, we need to know the enterprise value, that is EV. This is calculated by finding the sum of market capitalization, value of debt, minority interest and preferred shares and then minus cash and cash equivalents. Examples of cash and cash equivalents include bank accounts, market securities, treasury bills, etc. The formula is EBITDA multiple is equal to EV divided by EBITDA. This multiple ratio indicates whether the company is either overvalued or undervalued. If the ratio is high, it indicates that the company might be overvalued, while a low ratio indicates it is undervalued. The benefit of to the EBITDA multiple is that it takes company debt into account, while other multiples like PE ratio doesn't consider. Now let's look into the advantages of using EBITDA. In theory, it is similar to price to earnings ratio. Unlike the PE ratio, it is neutral to capital structure. It reduces the risk of variables that are affected by capital investment and other financial variables. EBITDA represents the value of the company's cash flow generated by ongoing operations. When a company is purchased, the debt is not transferred to the buyer. So how the business is financed currently is not an important matter or metric to the buyer. Buyers may be more concerned with intangible assets such as customers and performance than in the existing equipment condition and the debt structure of the seller. It is an indicator of how attractive the company is in terms of being a leveraged buyout candidate for potential investors. EBITDA can provide an overview of a business growth and how well the business is working. Now let's look into some of the disadvantages of EBITDA. EBITDA excludes debt expenses of a company by adding the taxes and interest back to the earnings. This can be used by the companies in misleading the masking the failures and financial shortcomings. Using EBITDA may not allow companies to secure loans. Loans are calculated on a company's actual financial performance. EBITDA fails to value depreciation and amortization as real cost. Patents and copyrights expire over time. Machines and resources that are used in the companies decrease in value and depreciate over time. EBITDA fails to acknowledge these costs while measuring the company's financial performance. EBITDA fails to reveal high interest financial burdens. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and do share.